Here is an interesting geometric puzzle that was posted to Mensa Mumbai's puzzle sheet. And like many other interesting geometric problems, this also I could trace back to Katriona Shearer's puzzles. The puzzle goes something like this, that we have been given a small square over here, whose area is known to be 5. Then stacked on top of it, there is an identical square. And beside that, there is a square of twice the linear dimension. So if this area is 5, of course, the other square will have area of 20, 4 times, because its side is 2 times. And then there is an arbitrary square given to us. We don't know anything about it, neither the size nor the area. But all we know is it is resting on the horizontal surface, like all other squares, and it shares a vertex with this square. And then on top of it is superposed a triangle. Two of its vertices are shared by the small square, while the third vertex coincides with the vertex of the unknown square. And we are asked to find the area of this red triangle. If you want to solve this problem on your own, you can pause the video now. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and solve it here. Now, this may look like a tough problem, if not impossible, because we don't know anything about this square, and therefore, we don't know the location of this vertex of it, and therefore, we don't know the third vertex of the triangle whose area is to be found. So if we don't know how this triangle is formed, how are we going to find its area? Well, all that would change if we look at this triangle a little differently. So I'm going to take this side of the triangle and I call it as our base. So here is our baseline. And that baseline being the diagonal of the square resting on ground is going to be inclined at 45 degrees, of course. And if you look at the diagonal of this square, even that is going to be inclined at 45 degrees. Okay? So these two diagonals or these two lines that are drawn are parallel. And as you know, the distance between two parallel lines always remains constant. But that distance is playing a special role in this case. If this is the base, then the distance between these two lines is going to be the height of our triangle. And that gives us an interesting idea. See, if I take this vertex of the triangle and move it anywhere along this line, is the height changing? No, because the distance between these two lines is constant and therefore even the height of this triangle will remain constant. So wherever I place it, you know, the height is same and the base is not changing at all and therefore the area of this triangle is not going to change. And that gives us the power, the right, to move it to any convenient location. And this is the most convenient location. Why? Because that eliminates this unknown square from the problem. Okay. Now it is completely out of picture. And the area of our triangle, of course, it has changed the shape, but the area has remained the same. Now the problem has at least become solvable, and you can calculate the area. But uh, there is no need for going for any uh, complicated calculation because we'll simplify this even further. For that, we are going to consider this side of the triangle as our new base. So this line becomes our baseline now. And then we'll draw uh, this diagonal of the smaller square. So that's uh, another line. Now these two lines, being diagonals of these two squares resting on the horizontal ground, are both inclined at 45 degrees to the horizontal, and therefore they are parallel. And the distance between them now, because this is our base, is the new height of our triangle. And then we are going to do the same thing that we did last time. We are going to take this vertex of this triangle and we are going to move it along this line. Okay? So anywhere we move, the area is not going to change. And you must have guessed what is the best position to move it to? Well, this vertex of our intermediate square. And that makes this triangle have area half of the area of this square. And the area of that green square is 20. And therefore, the area of our new triangle is going to be half, which is 10. And that is going to be identical to the intermediate triangle that we had, or even the original triangle that we had. Okay? So the areas are going to be the same. So that is how we can solve this particular puzzle without any calculations at all simply by geometry considerations. Thank you for watching.